Hello! Today's stories come from r slash Today I Messed Up. We have three stories today, but here's your warning. The first story is a gross one, and I was going to skip it, but number one, it was by far the number one most upvoted in the last month by like a lot. And number two, it was too funny to skip, and that's always the most important to me. So here we go. Today I messed up by downing two liters of apple juice and not appreciating the effect this has on the human bowel. Obligatory throwaway account, and this actually happened earlier this week. My job is driving around shops and putting out displays, leaflets, POS, etc. I had one particular call that involved moving lots of heavy stock and building some massive displays. Two hours of very heavy manual labor left me literally dripping in sweat and craving a nice, cool, refreshing drink. Before leaving the shop, I went to the fruit juice chiller. A pound for one liter of apple juice, or a pound fifty for two liters. I love apple juice, so I'll take the two liters, please. I drank the first liter in the two-minute walk back to my car as I was incredibly thirsty. My next door was about 45 minutes away, so I get in my car and crank up the aircon drink the second liter of apple juice within the first five minutes of my drive and start to feel refreshed. So stuck on a podcast and settled in for the drive. Fifteen minutes until the end of my drive and I start to get a bit of cramping in my stomach. Think to myself that I'll use the bathroom at my next door. Ten minutes until the end of my drive and the cramps are getting worse. Do a little lean to the side and try to let out a fart to see if that helps. Hmm, feels like I better not push too hard to try and get that out. Five minutes until my destination and circumstances are getting worse. I'm shifting in my chair to try and get comfy. The urge to go is getting pretty urgent. I look for somewhere to stop that might have a bathroom, but nowhere looks promising. Consider pulling over and running behind a tree or something, but stuck in slow-moving traffic, so decide to clench and push on. Pulling into the car park, I try to park as close to the store as I could and get ready to literally run through the store to their bathroom. I park and lean over to the passenger footwell to pick up my jacket. That was a bad move. The lean to the side has compromised my clenched sphincter. The dam gives way and the floodgates open. I feel warm liquid fill my boxers. It stinks, but in a way there is a small relief as the intense stomach pains are almost gone. I sit there in a puddle of apple juice that had just rapidly passed through my digestive system and contemplate my options. I do what any sane man would do and call my wife. Hello? Babe, I've got a problem. Oh no, are you okay? Have you been in a crash? Are you hurt? No, I've crapped my pants and don't know what to do. What the frack? That's hilarious. What are you, a toddler? Where are you? About an hour and 15 minutes from home. Oh my gosh. Well, you can either go in the shop and get some trousers or drive home. At this point, she's still taking the piss out of me, but I'm quickly distracted by an all-too-suddenly familiar feeling in my stomach. Round two. Oh no, there's more coming out. What the? Are you actually crapping yourself right now? Oh, it's disgusting. I can't stop. Now, round one was just a preview. Round two was the full show. It was pure liquid swamp water gushing out of my cheeks, and there was nothing I could do to stem the flow. I end up just making weird noises and have lost all ability to communicate. Imagine the worst dump you've ever had, but you're sitting down in a car seat whilst doing it, and your wife is listening via the hands-free. Oh no, it's breached the waistband. Up until this point, everything had been contained in my boxers, but I suddenly felt wetness creeping up my lower back, and the awful smell getting stronger. If you've ever had a kid, remember those awful dumps that come out the top of their nappy and all up their back? Well, that is happening to me, a 37-year-old man sitting in a company car over an hour from home. Eventually, the torrent subsides and I have no words for how I feel. I am literally sitting with my boxers full of liquid poop, which has overflowed up my back. I feel exhausted and wet. I swear the entire two liters of apple juice is now in my pants. I'm coming home. I'm literally covered in it. Ugh, you're repulsive. Give me a call when you're 10 minutes from home. I start the most uncomfortable drive I've ever experienced. Every gear change was creating a ripple effect with the swampy liquid. 
Every time I would accelerate or break, the liquid would slosh backwards and forwards. The next issue was letting my boss know that I was going to be home early so wouldn't be able to complete my calls for the day. But what could I say? I've just soiled myself in an explosive way while sitting in your company car? I say that I've been ill and I'm heading home. Didn't elaborate any further, and he said to speak to him tomorrow morning and let him know how I was then. So I drive home, getting cold as the previous body temperature liquid was getting cooler. I call my wife when 10 minutes from home, and she says she's going to wait in the back garden until I've sorted myself out. And she put down a bin bag in the hallway for me to stand on and strip off. I pull up outside the house and come across my latest problem, standing up. Despite the incident occurring over an hour ago, there was still a lot of wetness down there, and I knew that as soon as I stood up, gravity would take over. I slip off my shoes and leave them in the car, take a deep breath, and go for it. As I stand up, I can feel the wetness trickling down my legs. Within seconds, it's below my knees and I'm still a few steps from the front door. By the time I get there, there are drips coming out the bottom of my trouser legs, leaving a breadcrumb trail of nastiness up my garden path. I get in the house, step on the bin bag in the hallway, and close the front door behind me. You can look through my house and see the back garden from the hallway, and I see my wife staring at me with her hands over her mouth in disgust. She immediately starts retching and runs off down the garden. I start to get undressed, trousers first, and it is not a pretty sight. I put my boxers and trousers in the other waiting bin bag. There is no way they're getting salvaged. Next comes my top. What I had forgotten at this point was the waistband breach and the fact that my lower back was also covered. As I take my top off, I feel a wet smear going up my back and it dawns on me. There is crap on the bottom of my top and I'm spreading it all over myself. Already in too deep, I take the top over my head and end up smearing more of it in my hair. Now naked in the hallway and literally covered from head to toe, I start using the supplied pack of baby wipes to get the worst off. I then follow the trail of bin bags up the stairs to the bathroom to shower. I have the hottest, longest shower I've ever had. I was in there for a good half hour. The initial five minutes was probably the worst as all the dung was accumulating in the shower tray, leaving me standing in a swampy water puddle. I even used bleach to clean myself. Eventually, I felt clean enough, so I got dressed. I went downstairs and was met with the absolute carnage I had left the hallway in. The most horrendous smell, but with a small hint of apple and traces of poop puree everywhere. My wife stayed out in the garden for the next half hour whilst I sorted it out. I don't blame her. I would have done the same. Before she finally came back in the house and sprayed a whole can of air freshener, she stood looking at me, a shocked look on her face, and just said, What the actual frack? I had no real explanation. I just didn't make it to the toilet in time. She asked me if I felt ill. I felt fine. She asked me what I'd had to eat and drink that day. I said I'd had nothing out of the ordinary apart from an apple juice. When I told her how much I drank, she just burst out laughing. You basically drank two liters of laxative. She then explained to me how apple juice contains high levels of fructose and should only be drunk in small quantities hence why it is sold in smaller bottles than Coke, etc. I did not know this. I then remembered the car. I had yet to see the state of this. I went out, armed with a bucket of warm soapy water, bin bags, wipes, and rubber gloves. The smell when opening the car door was like nothing I'd ever experienced and immediately made me wretch, but I knew what had to be done. I won't go into too much detail, But I was out there for about 45 minutes and it wasn't pleasant. All of this happened three days ago. I'm currently having to sit on a bin bag in my car and there is still a lingering, poopy, slightly apple scented smell. Any advice of cleaning car upholstery would be much appreciated. My wife has said that this is going to take her a while to get over. So gross, but so hilarious. Hopefully, you got a good laugh. Please let me know in the comments if it was too much, and I'll keep this in mind for future. Let's get straight to the comments for more info on apple juice than I ever needed to know. Everything Now said, 
This was an incredible read and an important lesson learned. Didn't know this about apple juice. Thank you for going through this so we don't have to. The thief master replied, FYI, orange juice does the same thing. A lot of fruit juices, in fact. Kiwi is remarkable. I'm Swale replied, the body thinks purge everything. We've got like 200 apples coming in. Got Milky Milky Milk said, me, who has been constipated for a while now, finds this post very interesting. Someone replied, go get some apple juice and buckle up. <laughs> Robo Rich added, last thing he should be doing is buckling up. The Sword of Doubt said, man, I've been thirsty before, but not chug two liters of apple juice thirsty. Maybe start carrying water around. At least you know water wouldn't do that to you. A human steak added, a single cup of apple juice has 24 grams of sugar, which is like eating five teaspoons of sugar. Two liters of apple juice has about 380 grams of sugar. OP basically scarfed down over a third of a kilo of sugar. Good God. Someone else added, probably the real reason he was getting chills on the way home. If you made it all the way through that one, let's dive into some kinder, more wholesome funny with our second story. Today I messed up by ruining my country's National Art Museum's main exhibit. So back in year 9 or 10-ish, we went on a school excursion to the National Art Museum in Canberra to go see all the art and take photos of stuff for an assignment. One of the activities we were required to do was to find images in Jackson Pollock's famous blue poles. Everyone, except me, couldn't see how a random slather and glob of paint could possibly be a koala. So to help my fellow pupils, I kindly pointed towards where this image is on this giant artwork. Only, I didn't point, I accidentally touched it. And if you've ever seen this painting or any of Pollock's work in person, you'd know that the giant globs of paint don't ever fully dry inside. So. There I am standing in the middle of arguably the most expensive painting in Australia with blue paint from a wet paint glob bubble I accidentally touched, with about four to five hundred people staring at me like I just murdered someone in public. To top it all off, I also set off a proximity alarm, which was the loudest alarm I've ever heard. Think jewelry heist, diamond stealing alarm. Got my entire school banned, I got kicked out of my German elective, and had a school assembly about it too. Worst part is now, even years later, you're no longer even permitted to even enter the same room the painting is displayed in. I went back years later, and the entire room is gated off like a crime scene. Oh my gosh, that would be so embarrassing. I can't even imagine. There's a neat and unexpected update from a person who also touched this painting. Let's check out the comments. OP added, Also, my friends also ripped out a giant copper ornamental pear from the car park, so the school is banned, yes. Fine Spare said, now you're taking the piss. Oh my gosh, I do hate those pears, though. Lego, not Legos, asked, did you two orchestrate this to clear OP's name and dispel the local myths that grew from these incidents? Fine Spare replied, haha, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but the pears in question are by Baldessari and weigh a lot. Plus, they're secured to a concrete base, so his friends definitely didn't rip it out. However, kids do love to climb on them and try to wiggle them because they're outdoor sculptures. Naughty children get put in the pear wiggler, so watch out, OP. Fine Spare also had this to say. I don't want to be a killjoy or like dox myself, but I work in the field of paintings, movements, and have had hands-on experience with this work. You didn't ruin it, so don't feel bad, and it isn't roped off into another room. That's called a temporary exhibitions changeover. The painting is being conserved as an earlyish example of large-scale acrylic mixed-media painting to see how the paint behaves as it ages and also to clean the surface of dirt. Also, the gallery doesn't ban schools because they're an optional part of the national excursion curriculum, but this happened when you were in year nine, so I don't expect you to remember or know all that. Edit. I can't speak specifically to a popped blue glob, as OP claims. However, the paint isn't wet, per se. Just soften some of the thicker parts. He might have scraped it with his fingernail and seen some pigment transfer, or he might have just touched it and been mortified by the alarm, making it worse in his memory than it really was. But no, no glop poppin' has occurred to my knowledge, and the work is on near-permanent, ungated display, except for when it's being moved. Like right now, it's not on display according to my friends who still work there. This link is about the Blue Poles Conservation Project, which included an in-depth interview with paintings conservator David Weiss. Our third story is another wholesome, if not slightly raunchy, coming-of-age story. Today I messed up learning sign language. 
My mom's been involved with this new guy for a few months now. To be fair, enough time has passed for me to stop referring to him as the new guy. But he's not my dad, and I guess that will always make him feel like the new guy. According to Movie Logic, I'm supposed to hate him for trying to replace my father or whatever, but the truth is, I like him. I like him so much that I've been learning how to use sign language to improve our communication. Because new guy happens to be deaf. He can read lips, which is how I've been communicating with him. My mom didn't waste any time learning sign language at the beginning of their romance, and she's at the point now where she can have full conversations without using her voice. I was really proud of her, and so was New Guy. I'm not on their level yet, but I've had enough practice to follow a conversation that's not too complicated. My plan was to surprise New Guy on his birthday, which is two months from now, and wish him a happy birthday as well as officially welcome him to the family in sign language. However, I never factored in the amount of dirty talk my mom and new guy were having in sign language. Not knowing that I can understand them, my mom and new guy have gotten disturbingly comfortable exposing intimate details in my company. It didn't matter if we were at the dinner table or watching TV. I would constantly catch so many dirty descriptions being communicated between the two of them. They are worse than horny teenagers, and I should know I am one. No 17-year-old son should ever witness his mother use her fingers to demonstrate how wet she is. It's gotten to the point where I'm no longer willing to wait until new guy's birthday to make it known that I can understand sign language because, holy toast, I need my eyes to not see this stuff anymore. This is an ongoing screw-up. Is this like waiting too long after you've met someone to ask their name again? No. It's worse. Definitely worse. I mean... How does OP make a big reveal now without it being terribly awkward? Thankfully for OP, there is some helpful advice in the comments about how to delicately navigate this screw-up. Bit Effective said, Wow, this is both funny and horrible at the same time. OP replied, 99.99% pure horror for me. Someone replied, Then I hope that 0.01% funny is worth it. Goosegirl86 said, I reckon the best way is to say to your mom, hey, I've started to learn sign language for new guy. I notice you guys sign a lot, but you're often too fast for me. I'd love to practice with you sometime to surprise new guy. Hopefully, mom will practice with you, then work out that you can understand it and stop so much of the dirty talk in front of you. And the new guy may never find out. OP replied, solid suggestions in this thread, yours being another. Thank you. I might end up going with this one unethical castrator added, or, or you can maximize their embarrassment by signing something to the effect of, well, there goes my appetite at the dinner table. All in good fun, of course. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.